Generating traffic and sales can be a challenge for online merchants. But selling on the Walmart marketplace puts your products in front of millions of customers who shop on walmart.com. And right now, sellers who join Walmart Marketplace can save up to 50% on referral and fulfillment fees for the first 90 days. So get started today. Head over to marketplace.walmart.com slash savings. That's marketplace.walmart.com slash savings. Welcome to E-Commerce Conversations, a weekly podcast focusing on e-commerce topics featuring interviews with prominent people in the e-commerce space. Welcome to E-Commerce Conversations by Practical E-Commerce. My name is Kerry Murdoch. Strategies and ideas to reduce shipping expense appeal to most every e-commerce merchant. Our guest today is a shipping and logistics expert and he's here to help merchants reduce their shipping cost. He's John Haber, founder and CEO of Spend Management Experts, a shipping and logistics consulting firm. Well John, thank you for your time today. Thank you, good to be here. John, our audience, as you know, is comprised of e-commerce merchants, mainly smaller e-commerce merchants. Uh, We are looking forward to speaking with you on shipping matters, you being a shipping expert. And my first question for you today is, how can a merchant know if he or she is overpaying for shipping? Well, that's that's a great question, Kerry, and thanks for having me this afternoon. Now, one of the one of the easiest ways for a merchant to know if he's overpaying for shipping is if he's losing sales. Um, today, in today's environment, a lot of times the decision on who to purchase from can boil down to shipping costs, and that why that's why free shipping um, is playing such a big role within online retail. So, losing sales is a good indicator that um, uh, you know your customer. Um, may feel like he's overpaying for shipping and that you may as well be overpaying for shipping. Uh, Another way that you can identify that you're overpaying for shipping, especially in the world of parcel, is if when you look at your invoices, perhaps with the UPS or FedEx, if you are getting hit with charges on the back end after you invoice a customer or after you manifest a package, you're likely overpaying for uh, shipping. Um, things such as um, not manifesting a package correctly as a residential shipment, not putting in the correct dimensions of a shipment result in billing charges that come after the fact. And it's very difficult to recoup those costs. So if you look at the back of your invoice and you see additional charges, then you're likely overpaying for shipping. Additional charges, uh, meaning merchants shouldn't be paying additional charges? <laughs> merchants, uh, uh, in the additional charges can come in the form of what we would call a billing adjustment where, um, especially with impartial, carriers bill on what we call dimensional weight. And those are charges um, based on the dimensions of a package rather than the actual weight of a package. A lot of time we see that our customers are simply putting in the actual weights and charging for actual weights and not dimensional weights. And when you charge based on actual weight, the carrier does a billing adjustment and charges you a fee after the fact. Most of our clients have already um, either passed on that shipping cost and are not able to invoice it or they haven't identified that cost and and they're, and they're overpaying in those areas. Sometimes, in some cases, the the you know our customer they're going to incur the shipping cost regardless, and so it's not an additional expense. But it, it may be that they've budgeted a certain amount for a particular shipment, and the profit margin of that shipment is not what they really believe it is, and so they don't set the price correctly on the front end when they're selling the good. Hmm. That's so. 
What are other common mistakes? You just addressed one common mistake. Uh, as a as a shipping expert, what are other mistakes that you see e-commerce merchants make <clears throat> when it comes you know, there, to shipping costs? There's three three really good examples that come to mind when thinking about common mistakes that merchants make. You know, the the first one we see is that um, customers or, or merchants they're using the wrong products. Uh, or perhaps the wrong carriers. There are a lot of viable solutions out there um, that that uh, the, the general public not may not be aware of. There are a number of products that uh, provide very good service levels at lower cost than the traditional UPS or FedEx ground or air shipment. We call these hybrid products, and they are... Uh, partnered with the USPS to do the last mile delivery. And again, a lot of times we see that, um, you know, just not looking at what's available is a, is a common mistake. The second area is that um, uh, we often find that um, merchants are using the wrong services within their particular carrier. Um, a good example is that um, it, I'm based here in Atlanta and um, I need to get a package to Chicago in two days. And most of the general public, if, if you knew that, they would say, okay, I need to be there in two days. I'm going to ship a two-day air. Um, what they don't know is that UPS and FedEx both guarantee that a ground shipment from Atlanta to Chicago will arrive in two days or you get your money back. So you pay a premium uh, for using an air product versus a ground product, and you also pay a fuel surcharge cost, which is approximately 5% higher. So understanding um, you know, how long it's going to really take a package to get there, utilizing various services, is an area where we see a lot of mistakes being made. And the third area that we've identified that we see common mistakes made is not properly auditing uh, your invoices from carriers. A lot of times, uh, carriers do not bill accurately, and you need to keep a real close eye on your bills and make sure that you're being billed accurately and charged according to what you contractually agreed to. And if you're not paying close attention to that, then you're likely overpaying. How often, how often does a misbilling occur? Generally, we see misbillings occur on every invoice. Uh, our our clients experience anywhere from one to three percent of their overall net spend is due to incorrect billing um, assessments. Wow! One of the examples you just cited there, John, uh, I made note of. Wanted to follow up with you in the example you gave on shipping uh, a package from Atlanta to Chicago in two days. So for a merchant listening to this, a merchant may be using a, you know, using a, say, a hosted shopping cart. Does that require some additional programming in the back end? I mean, how can a merchant essentially manage that if a customer goes to his or her e-commerce site, buys an item, and there's an option on that cart and the, and the customer has said, i got to have this in two days. He's clicked an option on the cart. How does the merchant then manage that in the back end to know, hold it, from Atlanta to Chicago, I can do that with ground. I don't have to automatically pay for next day air. Well, there are a couple of different ways that you can do that. Um, you know, there are, there are applications um, that you can uh, purchase or there, there, there are or companies that you can um, enlist to help help you with that um, calculation. One of the first, one of the one of the easiest things to do is is ask your carrier to provide what we call a time and transit map, where they will show from your origin zip code or your your distribution center the the amount of days it takes to service different geographies in the U.S. That is a very easy way to put in place business rules that help you as part of the decision-making matrix as to what service to utilize. So on, so on the, the front end, 
you know, that will break, it'll give you a good idea of areas that are covered, um, ground shipping versus air shipping. For, 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 for geographies that may be on the border of that um, detail that the carrier is going to provide to you, um, doing back-end programming is always a great option. One of the things that we provide for our clients are routing guidelines that we try and make the decision-making process very easy on the front end. And so we will, we will uh, go into much greater detail than your carrier will and map out specifically by zip code um, what the time of transit is from your distribution center so that you can, on the front end, you can do a quick lookup based on the destination zip code, and it will tell you exactly what the guaranteed ground time and transit is. Let's change change gears just for a sec, John, and discuss comparisons from one carrier to the next. From it, it, it's it's common for a merchant to want to know for his or her particular circumstance what is the absolute cheapest carrier for me, and we have tried doing those comparisons from time to time. Uh, we have found the comparisons to be difficult because. Each carrier may have a specific a, a specific instance where they're better than the other one, but no one carrier is necessarily universally cheaper for every single product. And my question for you there is, is that the case? Is it very hard to do those comparisons? And as a follow-up, uh, uh, do you ever do something like that, a, a comparison like that? <laughs> Yeah, certainly, and, and, and you're right, Kerry. It is very difficult, and the carriers, it's they, they all have different tariffs and rate structures. Um, you know, for UPS and FedEx, the ground tariff is the same for packages from 1 to 70 pounds, but anything over 70 pounds is different. And then when you move over to the air products, they have different... Um, rate structures entirely. They're entirely dissimilar. Um, and when you move over to other options um, that we may um, explore, things that are hybrid products with the U.S. Post Office or other carriers like a Streamlight or a DHL Global Mail, they have different, they have different tariffs entirely. So it's very difficult to do an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. You know, one of the things that you can do is invest into a uh, a manifesting system where you have a multi-carrier platform. And what a multi what investing in a multi-carrier platform allows you to do is several things. It allows you to input the shipping characteristics: what's the origin zip code, what is the destination zip code, what is the weight, what service do I need. And then once you manifest that package, it will return what the cost is with a number of different providers so that you can make a decision based on the information that's returned by the manifesting system. That manifesting system in, in turn will create a shipping label for the carrier that you select. So you can, you can automate the process. It, it, it costs money to invest in the manifesting system. But even for smaller merchants, there are reasonable uh, vendors that uh, make this cost um, uh, pay off over a certain amount of time. Whereas, um, if you're not if you're not making this sort of investment on the front end, you're likely overpaying over time. So it's a wise investment, one that we encourage. It's something that we help our customers with. Um, and uh, we know a, a lot of vendors that provide that, and it's also a service that we help provide to our customers. So that would be a, you say, manifesting system. That would be, is that special programming on the back end of a merchant's cart, or is that like an API hookup to another site that does that automatically? Well, what happens is, um, you know, generally in my experience with a shopping cart is, uh, the 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 person buying the product would select a type of shipping, and you would say, "Do you want standard shipping? It may 
you may have a couple different options of shipping. You want, you know, two to three day shipping. You want three to five day shipping, five to seven days. And so once that customer selects what level of shipping they would like, then behind the scenes to them, once you receive the order and when it needs to be there, you manifest the shipping. You put in the criteria and you would have something on the back end there that says, okay, this customer needs this product by X date. You would plug that into um, your system there. A manifesting system is something that you use to create a shipment for a carrier. You would plug that in, and once you plug that in, your manifesting system would tell you, you need to send this package UPS, or you should send this package FedEx. It has the best cost, and it's guaranteed to get there by the time commitment the customer is required. What does that cost? I mean, as you describe that for merchants listening to that, to to make to to uh, use such a manifesting system, how do they pay for something like that, and what does that cost them? It really depends. I mean, there there there's a great range of costs. Um, you know the. Some of the merchants will charge per transaction. Um, other merchants will simply charge you for the software. Uh, but there are a lot of solutions out there that are reasonable for the smaller merchants. You don't have to be a multi-million dollar shipper to be able to afford this type of system. Um, so it, it's hard to pinpoint an exact cost because there are a lot of variables that go uh, associated with it. But it's not a cost that um, that even the smallest shippers um, couldn't pay for some form of business intelligence to help them with their decisions. So is, it, is that a service, did you say, is that a service that your company provides? Or? Yes, it is. Yeah. is. And that's available for smaller merchants? That's correct. How do you charge for that? Uh, just depending on the situation, mm-hmm. we either charge per transaction or... Um, depending on uh, whether or not customers utilize us for some of the other supply chain services, we may embed that cost just in the total cost of um, of what we would offer the client. So there, there are a variety there are a variety of, of uh, pricing options um, that we 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 custom uh, tailor uh, our pricing just depending on what solutions our customers may need. So there's. There's really a different uh, variety of different options uh, as far as the way that we price that. Let's talk about your company for a sec, John. Uh, spend management experts. Could you tell us a little bit about your professional background? First of all, I know you've got a long uh, background in logistics and shipping, and tell us about your the the company you founded, Spend Management Experts, and the services that you provide. Certainly, certainly. I I've been in the logistics space for almost 20 years. Um, like many logistics experts or, or, or uh, people with logistics experience, uh, I started off with uh, UPS and uh, did uh, quite a bit of work for UPS within corporate finance and corporate strategy and uh, did a lot of work with them on understanding, helping them understand um, the profitability of their largest customers, their national account uh, portfolio segment. Um, when I left UPS, I uh, went and worked for a, another uh, another consulting company and started up a supply chain consulting practice uh, called NPI. And uh, we're there for was there for six years, where we built up a pretty large customer base and um, uh, have branched off and formed a new company um, called Spend Management Experts and. You know, our, our mission is to provide visibility to our clients as to areas in which they are overspending across their supply chain, particularly with regards to freight costs. So we work with, um, you know, we work with a couple hundred different customers, um, and we've been very successful in helping you know, companies across all industries, whether it's retail or manufacturing or insurance and banking or fulfillment. Um, if you spend money on freight, um, we are very have been very successful at helping mitigate some of those costs and turning those into profits and uh, putting money back in uh, our clients' pockets. 
We have just another couple of minutes, John, and I've got two questions to ask you here, so we're running short on time. But you've, uh, you've described briefly the hybrid models that both UPS and FedEx offer. Uh, a lot of merchants aren't aware of those hybrid mo- models that combine private carriers such as UPS uh, utilizing the United States Postal Service to actually do the delivery, frequently the home delivery. Uh, could you explain those to us briefly? Yes, and and that's, um, you know, with B to C shipping, um, unlike B to B shipping in the partial world, there is a lot of competition, and um, many merchants don't understand that they have a lot of options available. Um, there are products offered by UPS, such as UPS SurePost and UPS Mail Innovations. FedEx offers a product called FedEx Smart Post. Um, there's a new national carrier called Streamlight. Uh, there is a carrier called DHL Global Mail. And there are regional carriers that offer hybrid products where they do the pickup and they do most of the movement of the package and the USPS does the last mile delivery. Um, many of these services provide full, full tracking and tracing capability, but they do so at a much lower cost than your traditional ground parcel products with UPS and FedEx. They may take one day longer to uh, arrive to the, 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 the end customer. A lot of them arrive at the same time. And the thing about using these products is that you're able to eliminate some of the very costly surcharges associated with normal ground shipments. Charges like delivery area surcharges and residential surcharges. Sometimes these costs can add up to almost half of the freight cost on an individual shipment. So if you can eliminate just the accessorial charges um, on those shipments, you could eliminate up to 50% of your freight cost on that particular shipment. So a merchant listening to this, a smaller merchant, how do they utilize? First of all, can a smaller merchant, say a merchant that's shipping you know, half a dozen packages a day, uh, can, can that merchant utilize these services? And if so, say UPS, FedEx, how do they, how do, they do that? Yes, they can absolutely utilize these services. Um, the thing about these services is they are not sold proactively. You have to ask for them. And, and so you should ask your UPS account representative or, or whoever you're shipping with whether or not these terms of service is available. They'd rather you use the old bread and butter because the profit margins for them internally are better. However, um, simply asking them if they're available, they'll tell you that they're available and they'll set up a program in which you can utilize these services. So they would ask for, how would they ask that question? They would say, do you have hybrid services available or what, what exactly would they ask for? They would ask if there are shipping services that are perhaps lower cost, um, that still provide good service level levels. Another way to position it is though I've, that you've heard of products where the U.S. Post Office makes the last mile delivery, but the pickup is made by a UPS or a FedEx or one of these other carriers. Simply asking if there are hybrid products in which your carrier picks up the package, but the delivery is made by the post office, your carrier will know exactly what you're asking them about. Okay. John, we have, we're have we actually out of time, but there's one last question, and that is anything else on your mind today, anything that you'd like to address to our audience of e-commerce merchants? You know, just, you know, the parting comments, Kerry, we know with the price of fuel and the uh, you know the competitive environment of free shipping. It's a it's a very tough market out there. Um, there's a lot of things that companies can do to help reduce shipping costs. Hopefully, we've provided good insight into some of those areas, and uh, we're always available uh, to help companies reduce shipping costs if there's an opportunity. Okay. Well, for purposes of our listeners, we've been visiting with John Haber 
John is the founder and CEO of Spend Management Experts. He's a shipping and, and logistics expert. His company is Spin Management Experts. That website is SpinManagementExperts.com. Did I say that correctly, John? SpinManagementExperts.com? That's correct. Okay, that's SpinManagementExperts.com. And John Haber, the founder of Spin Management Experts, we thank you for your time today, sir. Thank you. Thanks for having me. That's all the time we have for this week's e-commerce conversation. I hope you enjoyed it. Please tune in next week for another new episode.